Hi there. <laughs> oh. Hey. Hi. <clears throat> so, oh, we have Josh as well. Mm -hmm. Hey, Josh. Hey there. How are you? Uh. <laughs> what? Extremely frustrated with having to be my own AV tech. Oh, still issues with no the camera or I mean uh, issues with Zoom recording. Oh, Carolyn and I just I'm so sad to say that updating and then hard restarting uh, got rid of the convert button, right? But um, you still can't see the videos until you close the meeting. And then you have to wait for them to do their thing. Um, but that would have worked a lot better for us than the cloud recording, I think. Um, maybe, you know, it basically made local work the same way as cloud did, but there was no way for us to like see the video and know how well it went until you killed the meeting. Yeah. Oh, for the KubeCon talk, you mean you were just- Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Well, cause one of our thoughts was to record it in multiple segments because um, the um, because that way if we have to re-record something we're only re-recording you know three minutes instead of re-recording the whole thing mm. but um, uh, using a video conferencing platform is not necessarily great for that because you know we wanted to record one segment and then check it out and then see if we needed to adjust some things and then do the next and it turns out can't I actually necessarily do that. Um, and and then we discovered other issues with local recording on zoom period. Yeah, I like, think zoom is not really done to record video sessions yeah. right so it's not yeah. Yeah, but the issue particularly with some some updates of zoom where if you stop the recording and you start it over again. Mm -hmm. It tells you that it started, but it's not actually saving anything. Yeah, that's what oh. we're running into. Yeah. Apparently, on Mac, if you update to the very latest release, that's fixed, according to my Twitter commenters. But on Linux, you actually want to roll back to a previous release to not have that problem. <laughs> We were, you know what though, we we, we rallied, and then yeah. I have a good feeling about what we recorded, okay. <laughs> yep. and I'm hoping we don't need to re-record or anything. anything. Me too. Me we'll see. too. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, I'm always wary of upgrading right before trying to do something because usually it breaks everything. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that once you see it, you're going to say like, oh, we totally nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> or at least, or if anything needs to be fixed, it's just a matter of trimming a few seconds. Yeah. So, which, which I can do in post, but, but it's, it's starting, it's giving you the picture of what doing a presentation is like these days, because like, you know, we spent three hours recording and out of that only 45 minutes was spent actually recording. And it'll probably be four hours by the time I'm done editing it. So it'll be four hours to record a session, most of which is spent doing AV. Yeah. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Yep. <laughs> Today is March 30th, 2021. And this is the Contributor Growth Working Group. Aren't I good at changing subjects? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so what we have on agenda today, I think we've kind of already covered the KubeCon talk, actually. It's, it's been rough, but we have a, a recording that's slowly processing and we'll, we'll see how it looks before Josh has to then splice and edit it together again. Uh, I just want to give an update on the website. I did rebase all the website stuff and then up updated it with everyone's changes. So I'm just waiting for Josh for you to. Yeah, I know, I know. I just, I have not been able to actually look at it. It's okay. Because, well, you know what I've been doing, so. I know what you've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> We've been on Zoom for like five hours today. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of where, oh, hey, Ken. 
Good to see you. I'm glad you can make it. Hello. So that's the that's the website. But our goal is to definitely have the website in some form live by the KubeCon talk. Yeah. Um, so. And the main thing I'm going to be re reviewing, by the way, is rearranging all of our content in the main repo so that it's in a folder structure that actually works for the website. Yeah. So um, after I do that, I'm going to ping everybody on Slack on the mailing list because um, we want to make sure to, um, actually, I think I'm going to do it before I merge it because you will not want to have uh, like Paris's branches, branches open with uncommitted changes. Yeah, I'd like to get those merged, like Paris's PR in particular. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty okay. sure that's like one of the move files and I'm not sure how easy it'll be to do the merge conflict on her end. Um, whereas on my end, I can just kind of copy and paste the whole thing over. And well, so do we wanna, do we wanna merge, is Paris's thing ready to merge? Paris? Um, I'm, She's got a bunch so of I was, I'm working through comments right now. I mean, after that, it can merge. Okay. Yeah, this this is the one I'm thinking of. Uh, yeah. Number 78. Oh, okay. Because it's also the maintainer circle thing. But that's just a file. Oh. Um, and I did unhook if, if the maintainers the, readme too, by the way. If this is the readme, file. it's not in, impacted by my changes. I did not move the readmes. Yeah, this won't this won't be impacted at all. This one's fine. It's just yeah. the other one. Uh, this one, no pressure, but we're definitely going to want to merge this first so that we don't hand Paris a really ugly merge. Instead, I can do it. Um, I will have this done in twenty minutes if somebody can give me a LGTM on it. Okay. I have a rubber stamp with your name on it. Yes. All right, well, hold on. I'm going to potentially mute you too. And so I'm going to get these done. So hold on. Oh, um, <laughs> this this PR needs cleanup, unfortunately. You accidentally brought in an unrelated change into it. What unrelated change? Uh, there's one a one line edit to the maintainer circle file that's not It's related. unhooked. Oh, it is. OK. Yeah. Okay, I was still seeing it, but if you fixed it, you fixed it. Yeah, it's unhooked. It's oh, okay, there's cool. only two two files now. Yeah, okay. I said it very. Yeah, I'm and I'm cleaning it up right now with all the comments. Two files can confirm. Yep. Um, let me just take okay. notes here real quick. Okay. I think that's all we have to say about the website. <clears throat> the contribution ladder, we have okay. a PR, I think, open. Yep. Is it on the different, it's on the templates, isn't it? Yeah, because it's a template. Yeah, so that's one of the things that's going to change that I actually mentioned here, which is the contributor ladder file that's in the main repo is going to disappear if we merge the one into templates. Or rather, there should be a file in the main repo, but the file in the main repo should explain the concept of the contributor ladder rather than being an example of one. Yeah. Um, the, um, so, um, um, hold on, I was just gonna- Yeah, so we'll have, a, we'll have an advisory guide for the, the ladder. And then the template would just, you know, pick, choose your own adventure for the text. Yeah. Yeah. One, so this is the. Sorry, go for it. Oh, okay. So this is the, this is the new version of the template, but I've made actually some substantial changes since it went on to HackMD. Um, and we've all been a little asynchronous here. So I wanted to make sure, particularly during this meeting, I wanted to be sure that regardless of whatever nits we have here, that we agree with the direction that I've taken it in. Um, Cause you I haven't really got people to right on that. Yeah, together. so yeah. Here, why, why don't you share and walk Okay. Oh, and now we'll have our next excitement of the day and find out whether or not my sharing is working. Oh, 
It's always an adventure. Linux. The, um, okay. So let's see if anything happens there. Can you see my desktop? No. I'm here. I'll share my screen again. You see a big Sorry black screen? That. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Yep. So here, wait, let me just view the file. Ooh, okay. Look great. Do you want the yeah. raw view? Um, yeah, because we've got some comments in there, unless we can see them. Yeah, no, we can't see them. That's very okay, everyone. We're so read, read this raw. Yeah. <laughs> Everything there is we've sort of seen it before. I sort of cleaned it up, deduplicated some names, added notes at the beginning of every role to give a little bit of meta explanation about what the role is for and who would include it in their contributor ladder. Um, the um, uh, where I made some substantial changes. So one of the, the last thing we talked about um, in a meeting that I was in was having the separate sort of maintainer expansion pack file. Um, and we started working on that and Karen put up a HackMD file for that. And then we totally bogged down because um, there's a little bit of stuff there, but um, none of us were able to come up with fully realized descriptions for fully realized templates for these additional maintainer roles. Um, and I think part of that is like when I looked at it, like one of the first things I started was, oh, hey, I'll give documentation maintainer as an example. Kubernetes has a good example of that, right? Because we have our separate documentation roles. And so we can have the documentation maintainer and I look at Kubernetes documentation maintainer. And it is so Kubernetes project specific um, that it would not make for a good template. And that kept happening with the other sort of specific maintainer roles that I tried to finish up. So my suggestion at least for this version of the template that we not have those and instead we go back to just having a listing of potential other maintainer roles with descriptions of what those generally would be. Um, which is kind of where we started, but um, except with more roles now. Karen, thoughts? Sorry, I'm still reading through. <laughs> oh, okay. Semi-related note, we've <clears throat> added a branch to the templates repository called drafts. And that's going to be kind of like a staging place where we can merge in things like this before we're, we're totally ready to, to put it in front of the TOC and be like, this is the template for X, Y, or Z. Um, so as you're looking for content in that repo, just be aware that there's two branches. There's main, and that's you know the finalized version of any template. And then there's drafts where you, you'll find things like this, the contributor ladder template. Do, are we trying to get consensus on this during this meeting or? Well, or... we're not quite ready to merge. So one of the things also about that is I added in the additional maintainer roles and I thought, okay, well, if we're not gonna be able to provide a template for these, at least provide an example for them. And so I have, if you notice an empty example link for each of them. Yeah. So that would be something we should at least take a stab at. Um, annoyingly, I have a good example for subproject maintainer, but it's for a project that also hasn't merged its contributor ladder yet. <laughs> so, why can't you um, take the project owner from Kubernetes? Hmm? So, why not take subproject? Um, owner yeah, Kubernetes? yeah. Documentation maintainer. I was trying to think of a project that actually has 
called out localization maintainers that actually documents its roles. Because I know projects that have de facto localization maintainers, but whether or not they have that documented is another question entirely. Um, I have a question. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Going back to how you like kind of broke down the example maintainers, um, can you reiterate why they're currently comments? Like, um, because those are not fleshed out. They're not templates that somebody can just fill in values and use them. I guess, so my concern there is more that if it's not immediate on, like, unless they click through to the comments, then they might not think about it at all. Um, as in like, you wouldn't be encouraging them to think about the different roles. So I guess my only thing would be like, do we want to make it more apparent? Um, you know, the trade off that we don't have examples right now. <laughs> Are you talking about viewing it this way versus in the, the yeah, format? exactly. Every single yeah. one of the templates says at the top that you need to be viewing it in raw. But um, that's assuming that they like, that's like when they use it, right? Like, do you think if someone comes to this page and they're thinking about this stuff that they'll necessarily go through all the comments? I, I guess I just kind of mean like on if, first page. Yeah, I mean, if they don't, there's a lot of stuff missing. Because there's a oh, lot of stuff in comments. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. And all the templates, we yeah. have by 50% comments. Yeah. And and the problem is that we put in the additional maintainer roles not in not as a comment. We're back to the problem that we had with the very first version of this, which is we have more roles that we say pe most people are not going to use than we have roles that we say <laughs> people are going to use. And it kind of bulks out the original file. And that was how we got to having a second file in the first place. Fair enough. The um. So, I mean, I'm I'm not saying we might eventually want our sort of maintainer expansion pack eventually. Um, I just like to have it not hold up publishing the basic version. Yeah. Um, because honestly, so... I've already taken our draft and used it to build a contributor ladder for a project because I couldn't wait. I'd also like to see if, if there was something that didn't make the translation into the comments or even, even the comments, I'd still love to see that material be in the, the advisory guide. Cause like, so there's what goes on our website once we have it that walks you through the idea of a ladder and what should go in it, right? But isn't the template. And then there's this template here. I wanna make sure that, I mean, we put a ton of work into identifying different ways to be a maintainer and have non-cone contributions. I want to make sure that we don't, we don't lose that. It's going to go into the website then. So nothing will be hidden behind to-dos or markdown comments at that point. It'll, it'll be visible for everyone on the site. Are there any more comments or things we want to talk about with the ladder right now? Is there a plan for getting this merged quickly? Because we are referencing it in the talk and we're going to be referencing and linking to hopefully a, a real template, not a real template, a merged template. Okay, yeah, the only thing I know that needs to be done is getting those example links. Okay. or deleting the blank link that if we can't find a good example for something. Um, the, um, uh, and, and then whatever edits people have, because yeah. I'm sure there's going to be edits. Okay. Um, um, if we're gonna have like the examples, um, is there a place, did you pull them out into like separate pages already? Or like, do we have HackMD? No, 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 the examples would be a link to some page and some real project somewhere. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. So a project has a documentation maintainer role. We would link to where they put that. Yeah. They may not have a ladder, but they still may describe the role. Yeah. Ideally it's a ladder. 
So do you just need help populating the links right now? Is there a place we can drop them? Yeah, uh, well, I'd attach the PR. OK. Um, um, yeah. OK. For the contributor framework, um, I think we, we have one, zero, one, and two merged in. Let me bring that back. Yeah. So if I go in here, sit in drafts. Yeah. So you have zero, one. Oh, I guess, wait, where'd two go? Was it always called just PR oh, it's, workflow? Yeah, I don't know. It should be a two before it. I don't know. Okay. I'll get it. Don't, don't worry about that. Don't change it. Because in the website, it's named differently. <laughs> So uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it because the file, as part of my pull request, the file got renamed Okay. to, to look right as a URL. Um, do we have the next PR for that yet? Um, I, I, I know that uh, Josh had them all, uh, so Scott had them all already in his thing and he was going to, uh, so I just pinged him actually and, uh, and said that we're ready for the next one. Um, should you put them all uh, through at the same time or it's better one by one? They get shorter, by the way. You know, if they're shorter, I think it's fine to group in more. Yeah. yeah. The first one was the beast and then it gets... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Carolyn will give you very timely reviews on all of these. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else that people want to talk about today or? We can just end early. Otherwise, that's the end of our agenda. On my end, I kind of, yeah, I mean, like, uh, once that is kind of all submitted, and then it's kind of the question, how do we get um, people to review and then, because I think that's kind of the issue, right? There are a lot of people with a lot of things and a lot of things to review. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but we'll see when it's once it's there, right? I, I know Carol and you see see these, but because um, I know that there is a process once they're all there, uh, before it gets like shown to someone from the talk, there is like a whole process. So, but I guess we'll see it once they're live. And yeah, I know it's I, a lot to ask people to review everything because I'm not the only one asking for things to review. There's Karen, there's Josh, there's Paris. <laughs> Everyone is asking review. <laughs> Yeah, I think once we have, is, is it five parts? I forget how many, six. Um, we, we can submit that to um, our liaison. Are we gonna have them in one of our meetings soon? Our TOC liaison? We can invite them. Okay. I, was, I wanted to, could we go through the framework live since we have some time? That would actually like, I feel like speed up my review by a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Catherine, can you maybe share and walk through it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me um, find it first. All good, take your time. Okay, you read the first one, but not the second one. Yeah, so the first one, da, 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 da. let me just see here. Uh, yeah, so that's the second one that is there now. Um, yeah, so what is your 
preference? Do you want to just read it or should I just walk through it or? Let's walk through it, so that's fine. Um, okay, so I have to remember now too. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, yeah, basically here we're kind of trying to see like how do you successfully kind of manage people through the flow and make sure they're not um, uh, demotivated through the process. Um, and um, so here basically you talk about like how the process, is, uh, how the, the flow is. And um, I think we got rid of um, the things here, but it's like also like kind of make notes on your CRM tool um, so that you can, you know, like you remember things uh, and um, valuable information associated with one person. And um, I hear once someone submitted, like, right, that's a, like a really good point, or you have to make sure that the person doesn't get engaged to so try to suggest something, because that could be like a, a, a moment where you lose the person again. So it's kind of like, okay, when someone submits something, try to see if they're interested in doing more. Um, one of the things that came really crystallized was the expectations part, like, um, how um, that you have to be like super um, transparent regarding a response time, what you need, right? Like the better, the more time you put into explaining exactly what you need, which may sometimes feel like you don't have the time to do it, but if you do it, people will create much better PRs, right? Because they know exactly, they cannot read your mind, of course. So the more specific you are, the better results there will be. Um, being really clear with documentation. Um, and then whenever you have an idea that that has to do with a PR that was submitted, kind of capture that and kind of tell that to that person. So maybe um, you're kind of planting a seed for future uh, contributions. Um, then it's a little bit about tools, like uh, what is that, that, that you have to re like really give people what they need and um, so you have like docs, uh, PR checks, templates, lots of different things. Uh, you could do uh, videos, bots. Um, yeah, but like also we have to be sure you're able to uh, maintain that. So be, <laughs> be, be conscious of what you like, what you can maintain and, uh, but give them as well, like enough um, um, tools. So people know exactly what to do. Then the automation part, uh, automate as much as possible. We skip this part for now because it's too technical. Uh, I yeah, think well, that should go first. Pardon me? I almost think that should go first. I've been telling most people lately, like you should think automation first in terms of contributor experience. Um, because I, I nervous, I'm nervous that if we give folks a lot of this, like it just will stress them out too. Um. A lot of what do you mean? As far as like going in depth with, if scroll up, can you scroll up just really quick? Sorry. Cause like right here, we're going into in depth on like what they should put on PRs and stuff like that. Oh, up here? And from when I, and when I talk to maintainers about this stuff, they usually just get really stressed out because there's, they say like, it's things that they know they need to do, but they can't do it. So then when I say, well, that's what automation can help you out with. And like, it opens up a much more positive um, outlook, like, and especially when I demo things like the, that like the Kubernetes bots does um, with like displaying documentation and stuff like that. So I wonder if like, we should put just a note at the top that a lot of this, a lot of this, we really believe should be automated. Um, it yeah, I think that's maintainer burden. the top part is more referring to expectations and like co communication. So I think that's not the part that can be uh, automated, right? Like, okay, if if you know that it takes you three weeks to uh, review a uh, merge of PR, you know, let them know uh, because they may think after two but days. You can let them know automated too. What? Yeah. Like, well, yeah, that, that's yeah. why you can you can automate all those expectations. Oh, I wasn't like, I don't think it's meant to put it like somewhere manually or say it is like put it somewhere in the docs or yeah, create, but like you have to have like somewhere a place where people know. Um, like in our contributing guide, our template, we put this in here, average response time. 
I think that like, I think that would be helpful to say like where you're putting these expectations. Cause right now I'm just reading it as a maintainer and you're telling me that I should do all of these things. And I already don't have time to do these things. Well, I think like all of these belong in the contributing guide, the entire manage expectation section. Yeah. And I think there's like, there's a lot of this that's also just duplicate with the the, the other guidelines that we have. So I guess. Well, if you have it something, we should just like link to it, right? Like, um, for instance, it's something like, I I don't talk a lot about the letter. I kind of mention it and then I link to the letter, right? Like, so that's kind of the idea. And I think I have your um recruitment playbook as well somewhere you know like so it's like oh if you want to recruit people like mention it and then link like so i think if if we have stuff already we should link to that and not but so this is basically kind of like more of an overview and ideally it would link to which is more high level and then link to all the things that are more detailed and then if you want to you know go more into details yeah read that the um and I don't know that we have like for this manage expectations thing. I don't know that's not material that we really have anywhere else that I know of. I guess I, I'm like in agreement with that. I think it should go on the contributor.md. I, I, I think that all of the, I think all of the guidance should live with its templates. That's I, well, that's, I don't we can't know. fit everything in the templates. It, we've tried and it, it really doesn't work. That's we'll why live we've been in, talking live in about having a repository with it. I'm, we've been suggesting have, or our plan has been to have a page on the website or something like, like this that then links to the template and explains how to use it. Okay. I guess we just need to figure out where those templates are going. Cause I got from right now, I'm, I'm looking at the PR as well. Um, from right here, I don't necessarily see a lot of places where people can go for additional help outside of just guidance. Um, like for instance, a man, like, I don't see that necessarily like where you should put this. Um, I think it's a good start. I just, I worry that we have a lot of duplicate content that we're going to, that we're going to be calling people to, um, and that we're also giving guidance in areas where is more adding more humans when we don't necessarily want to add more humans in a lot of these situations. That's just my take. So manage expectations. Is that, I mean, to be honest, that used to be in the contributing guide and it looks like it got lost in the review process. It's a giant comment. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is why I'm really unhappy at the moment with like shoving stuff in the comments yeah. instead of yeah. having a like said the website and then the template yeah. you can kind of yeah. walk you through how to fill it out because I think Karen's spot on like uh, I don't know finding the comments is not easy reading the markdown raw yeah. is awkward. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, best what we should have is have this kind of a guide, link it to the templates, have maybe have comments in the template that are very much shorter versions of this. Like, I mean, once we actually have, once I actually write a guide for the contributor ladder, for example, um, I, I may actually take, you know, also submit a PR to take some material out of the comments in the current template because it has a lot of comments. Yeah. Is this the temp? Is this what goes along with this template? Like, should just should this right here, the growth framework, be linking to the template and vice versa? Like, they yeah. should just both be linking back and forth to each other. Yeah, because because like for example, right here, I uh, in this guide, I don't know if it's in any of the current PRs yet, but you've got stubbed out here developing a contributor ladder and using the contributor ladder, right? So that's where that material is going to go. Yeah, and then if they come to the template first, it should link them deep right mm -hmm. into where they need to go to work yeah. with the template. Yeah, exactly. I guess I just don't, I guess for, for right now, from a visual perspective, that's why I wasn't seeing. It's just, I guess, mm -hmm. 
all text, which I know, and I know it's still in a PR state just from like, Hey, I'm trying to put myself into a already busy maintainers mind of how do I make this better? Yeah. And then it's just text with not much like links to act like forkable things and stuff like that. Um, and not enough emphasis on automation and like automated things that people have created that help this. Like I know Porter has and stuff like that. So that's why I think our emphasis should really be with a lot of contributor growth things in general, just from a vision perspective. Um, well, I think this section is not really saying uh, how you should do this, right? It's more like, these are the things that you need to do, right? You have, you should be clear about response time, uh, you should have all the information, of, like clear information about how the flow and what the action items are. So I know as a contributor, I know what, what is expected, uh, what is expected uh, regarding code and documentation quality. And like, we could make a little note at the end and saying a lot of these things can be automated and then add it in the automated. Because this is just like, these are the things that, you know, should be given like, and then whether you do it automatic if you can whether you automate it or do it individually is on your own but you have to kind of be really um clear about these things yeah it'd be cool if um after we merge it would be cool if like we could go in and make sure every one of these has an example and something forkable something what forkable meaning like so for average like for um expectation about code and documentation quality like we can give an example of um you know like uh pr review guidelines um uh an automated bot that that um comes on and and gives you that documentation so like that's what i think that would be really good to go with the guidance is like just firm examples and um stuff that we think would go well instead of just like high level guidance. Hmm. Well, I think a, a way of seeing this as well is like, this is of course very high level, right? And we have some assets already where we can link through, but like once we're done with that and the letter and so on, like that would be like, okay, like if this is kind of the things that you need, like that would be like a good way to identify the next, you know, a job is like, okay, what, what would be useful? And then uh, because you have this high level thing that gives you like kind of like a, idea what to do and then it would be great as you said like to have something that goes more into, into detail right you don't want to be too detailed in this thing but like you want to link to things when people want to have more information about about these specific areas for sure so maybe it's a good idea like it's a good source of as you said like the um coding and documentation quality like that's a, if you say like, oh, that's a super important point. That could be like the next, um, you know, project. I think one thing Paris pointed out that really resonated with me is that we need to be careful that our job here isn't to output more yeah. text. Totally. It's to give things that a maintainer can look at in a very short amount of time and do one actionable thing because this is like my bread and butter but when you see a document that's I don't know how many pages long and I'm not negging on your document at all all of this stuff is the things we say verbally all the time but I don't see anyone reading this end to end you know what I mean yeah um because it would feel overwhelming <clears throat> So like I, all the I, people that we want to read this wouldn't read it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. How do we juggle wanting to give people little bite size, do this and you'll make your life easier versus providing conditionally if they want to dig into it, all the background and reasoning, uh, you know, behind it. Yeah. I think this is, this doc is like the Bible for anybody that does community management for open source. Yes. This is, this is the, like, this is the Bible for community, man. This is the Bible for our group. Like, it's like the meta, it's like the meta Bible for our group. Right. But 
90% a... of open source doesn't have community. Right. But what, what you're describing is actually a classic, one of the classic problems in writing documentation, which is um, there's um, three basic types of documentation. There's narrative documentation, there's reference documentation, and there's solutions documentation, right? Narrative yes. documentation says, um, explain this whole concept to me. What we have here is narrative documentation, right? And, right. and if you yeah. want to understand, if you need to understand the big picture, you need the narrative documentation. Um, and then reference documentation is, um, I want X, right? I want to understand the sub projects, um, you know, explain the, the sub projects governance structure to me, right? That's reference documentation. I want to understand one thing that I've already defined. And then there's solutions documentation, which is like that only turn 90 degrees, which says, hey, I have this problem. How do I fix it? Um, and it's always a problem for documentation because you really need all three kinds of documentation for the recipients, right? Because people come at it with all three angles. Um, but you can't structure the same set of text to fulfill all three roles. Yeah. Um, and even if you have the staff to produce all three, keeping them in sync is very, very difficult. Um, the, um, um, so, um, you know, for, for what it's worth, I mean, so if we approach this and we say, hey, look, this is narrative documentation and we wanna work on ways to enable it to make it useful as other kinds of documentation. We yeah. kind of already have the reference documentation in terms of the templates. We just need to cross-link the two. Yeah. Um, I, so I then, then the solutions documentation is really what's missing. Yep. Um, the, um, and that we're gonna have to create from scratch additionally after we merge this. But, but I mean, this is to solve the problem, which I have run into on multiple CNCF projects of, yep. hey, Here's a CNCF project. It's sponsored by a company. This is that company's first significant public open source project. They don't know how to do open source at all. Yeah. And I found that often they are actually willing to assign somebody to read through an entire guide if the guide exists. Yeah, I mean, I would read. I, I, I mean, I think that this guide's amazing for that role. That is yeah. perfect. Um, I wonder if we should even put like a little thing at the top, Catherine, that says like, even like maybe an intended audience or um, like who should read this or, um, I mean, obviously I want, obviously I want everybody to read it, but it's kind of a, just like a, like a little flag, I guess, right. For, for people who are reading. Um, oh, cool. You already have one. Yeah. Oh, what are did I put, oh, I don't know, it's such yeah. a <laughs> Yeah, where, yep, wait, where are all the PRs for this, by the way? In draft. Well, the P, no, there no, aren't there are not, there aren't PRs. No, they're, they're merged. merged. We don't have all of the PRs yet. Okay. So the first two seconds. Oh, it's in the drafts in. folder. Got it, got it, okay. I love the motivating users to contribute section. That was the first PR that I saw that I liked. Um, like that, like honestly, and I love that you led with that one. I love or I love that. Yeah, like I love that we led with that because um, I feel like that's the number one question I always get from other maintainers is how do I get my users to contribute? <laughs> um, so I really appreciate that you led with that one. You know, but it's the first step, this, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you exactly. don't have contributors, it's like, okay, first step, like, okay, I need people to. Yeah. I mean, every, most contributors are going to be users of one kind or another. Either they are personal users or they work for a company that's a corporate user. I have a suggestion. Right now, part of what makes us feel daunting to imagine someone reading it is because it is one document but that's not how it's going to be presented on the website and the website these are individual pages and I think a good way to tie together our solution focused and reference documentation right now we just have reference and it's it's the templates is 
maybe to have a call to action or like, what the heck am I supposed to do with this information that you just dumped on me, either at the beginning or the end of the page so that um, you can immediately jump from this to how do I make it go? How do I make it go fast? You know, mm -hmm. I think, cause we were, we're, I feel like we've given a lot of unactionable feedback to Catherine so far. It's, it's all good feedback, but like, if I had to say what we could do, it's one, we'll remember that this is me page by page and two, how, how do we yeah. want to link is maybe so, a next steps at the end of each page. So actually, honestly, like we can treat it like an academic, we can treat it like a textbook and just start inserting things in there of takeaways from this section. Yeah. You know, do X, Y, and Z. Um, yes, the, yeah. um, and, and any of us can add those. Yeah. yeah. So, so I we, just feel like, oh, God, sorry, sorry. I was going to say, we can get a lot of this merged in and then yeah. have separate tasks and follow-ons. Because like I said, we're talking about follow-ons right here. Let's, let's do that with this too, where any one of us can go, I know what one of the next steps is for a successful PR workflow. Or to be honest, the entire thing about automation um, could be, you know, more links and, and like, here's a quick win, here's a quick win. And just list five quick wins at the end of uh, these sections. Um, and all of us can help make that happen without having to hold up. I really don't want to hold up Catherine's work here because it is a great Bible and I want people to read it <laughs> as soon as possible. So how many total PRs is this Catherine? Um, so it's five, but like, yeah, two, one and two are in, and then, uh, this is fairly short. <laughs> so we have three more. Yeah, but we but can like probably this one is one, together. three, four is fair, so it gets really short, and then yeah, um, yeah. So the longest are uh, the ones that are already in. Here, I have I actually have like a high level kind of question for the crew. And this, cause this goes back to like this whole idea of like, well, not idea, these like open questions that I have uh, with CN, not with, with just the CNCF community at, at large is do all CNCF projects have to be contributor communities? Does, um, does that, I, yeah, go ahead, Josh. Today, yes. That's so that means like, if that's the case, I think we need to make contributor ladder required for graduation. Yeah. And, and we have a lot of the contributor ladder. Um, that's the other thing we were discussing with Dawn, the current draft mission statement, et cetera. These are all things that we do want to propose as graduation requirements because projects should have them. Um, this is why yeah. I'm like, I'm all about this taxonomy life. So. I'm all about this like contributor community taxonomy life. Anyway, because yeah. so the reason why that, that just like triggered in my head is this is this doc that Catherine has up right now, or I'm sorry, the section of the doc that, Ka that Catherine has up right now. Because it's pretty much we're telling people to do this. Yeah. And so it's like, what if their crew is like a plug in and it's 10 people forever? So are we saying that 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 size of a of a project is required to have a contributor ladder to graduate? Which is all the more reason to give people a template that they can just plug some numbers into. The um, well, I guess I just fundamentally disagree with that all projects need contributor ladders. I agree that you need a contributor ladder. A contributor, if you are a contributor some, community. Right. Like I in agree. Some case, like, that's what I agree. Okay. But in some cases, the contributor ladder is only going to have two rungs on it. Like for a smaller community, that's, that's the answer. It's not that you don't have one. It's that you have a much shorter one. Because, for example, every, every project is going to have maintainers. And if you don't have defined criteria for how you become a maintainer, then it's hard to demonstrate that your project is open to new maintainers. Every CNC of project should be open to new contributors or sorry maintainers yes or no yes yes yeah no and yeah this the answer is yes it has to be part of the the graduation criteria because otherwise you just have people floating around never really articulating how to become a maintainer and then you just invited 
weird right. clickish things where no one ever effectively can become one. And so they now, need to write it up front. It may be terribly hard or terribly uninteresting or for you know one sentence, but I think we need to force people to use their words and say what it really takes. Agreed. Now, but um, what if they say, well, why can't I just do this in my governance MD? Because I, I can't. So the, re the reason why I'm asking these very specific questions is maintainers will take our advice and just fork it, right? So I'm so I guess I'm saying here is like, do they really need a separate document as long as it's spelled out somewhere? I would say that it does not need to be a separate document. Having it as a separate document provides a little bit of additional clarity, but I would not put that into the requirement. Agreed. A lot of people who want to do more than just, we have maintainer, press these buttons, you are maintainer and it's two lines, are going to want to say a lot more than really fits or belongs in the governing doc, at which point it makes sense to have the separate template, which is why we went that way. Yeah, or because but you can do like, you, you can do like Kubernetes. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a community, if you have something where you do want to actively encourage participants of all different roles, uh, there's way too much to put in governing that has nothing to do with it. Right. I guess I'm just more, I guess I just look out for like the 80% of projects that are like under 10 people. Yeah. And, and, you know, if I was writing a requirement about this, the requirement would be something like um, the project must have a written, must have written documentation on how a contributor advances um, from their initial contribution all the way yeah. to maintain. Fair, fair. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, the, um, because well, we like the quote unquote ladder structure. I wouldn't make that required. If somebody else can come up with something, something that looks different, but nevertheless documents the process, that's fine. But as far as our templates go, I think we want a template, what we want a model mm -hmm. and, and it's not stuffing it into the governance stack. Yeah. It might be cool to like say, um, say that in here, next iteration, not now. Um, just good. I wanted to discuss that for a while. Thank you for <laughs> discussing with me. That was cool. Um, well, let's just merge and go. Yeah, Catherine, do you, yeah. we said a bunch. Do you have what you need to make your next PRs and you know what we're going to be asking for in those PRs in order to get them merged? Um, well, so uh, yeah, as I said, Scott has them out there. So I think mm -hmm. He can add me to it or something and I can um, add a little bit to it. But I think we wanted to have like a next, well, we had like two, the next steps, takeaways and five quick wins, which we have to decide what we, I like, I kind of like the five quick, uh, quick wins as well. I thought it was kind of like, a, it sounds cool. It's like, okay, these are all the things, but these are the five things that will really, like if you want to get going quickly. So I don't think those should hold up your PRs. I think we can add those incrementally. Uh, to these as drafts. Does yeah. anyone have a disagree? So do you want me to do any um, changes to this right now? I, well, here we kind of said like that it is a little bit of a duplicate I, content. I'm, I'm still not seeing where what content that's duplicating. And yeah, I don't think it's duplicate content. I think that we would I like to link to the template and yeah. tell people this is where you need to verbalize everything we just discussed. Yep. I don't necessarily think it's duplicate. I think <clears throat> it's we've it's just going to be tough for us to maintain the same text in multiple files. So that's what I mean by duplicate. So well, like, we don't have right. this text anywhere. Not th not this text in particular, but some of the other texts that I saw. Um, like new contributor workshops, we're going to go in on the, the playground for that. Um, and there's like other things that we could put in these areas. Yeah. I don't know. So I guess that's, I guess my thing is just maintenance of these. Um, that's why I'm just a big fan of like one paragraph and then links, you know, cause then it's just like canonical sources and not necessarily like stuff that we have to go back on and 
and check. Yeah, okay. so when I knew oh, about it, this, sorry. sorry, this is what I did here, right? Because I knew you were working on the recruit, uh, uh, recruitment, recruiting playbook. So that's what I, why I created here, because I thought like that fits in really well. So it's like, hey, and here are a few examples. And it's like, okay, here's the full thing, right? So totally agree if we have this. I just didn't know, like, don't know where that would be, but I totally agree. We don't want to be, like, the, the, like, if this can be like really high level and it's like, okay, here are the things you have to think about. And then it's like, boom, 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 here are the details. Like if you just want to have an overview, just have a read. Uh, but if you want to uh, dive deeper, here are the, the links. And so you can really kind of learn more. Um, so I think that that's basically the, the uh, kind of idea that I had. Um, if there is any duplicate content here or something, it's because I wasn't aware, right? I, I did this with uh, your playbook. I did it with a letter. So I didn't go into the letter in more detail because that's what <laughs> the actual file is, right? So um, um, so at some point, maybe um, what we can do as we create new assets that go deeper, we can decrease, you know, the, like we have like three paragraphs talking about the topic. Uh, if we create a specific asset for that, we can just, you know, make one paragraph and link to that. So I think that would be a good approach. It's like, as long as we don't have it, it's like high overview. And then we kind of start trimming it as we create more assets and then link to that. I love that. But yeah, we should like, if in the future, if we can trim it, definitely. Yeah, I'm also seeing going in reverse with some things like taking some of those long comments out of some of the templates um, and simply linking back to, to the appropriate page in this guide. Yeah. I think we're having very uh, predictable growing pains because we're trying to like pull content out of thin air and we don't have it all at once. So it's going to get shuffled around as we evolve our documentation organizational structure. Yeah, and, and if we ideally, don't like that, we're going to have to start doing a lot more big bang, <laughs> you know, organizational design and be like, what are all the types of information we want? Where is it going to go? So that we actually have a place to put it from day zero. Yeah, well, I think it's a matter like as the content grows, is kind of keeping in mind what we have and then adjust it, right? And then yeah. where should it link? What should, what can be reduced? Um, but it's a good problem to have. Like once you, that means that you're creating more and more assets right now. We're just getting started, I guess. Okay, so for now, I just, uh, or um, Scott uh, will submit the missing PRs and then we uh, add those um, quick wins or next steps or takeaways or whatever. Or did you want me to do something else? If you have them right now and you just need to copy and paste them in, like, sure, obviously we can do it now. Otherwise, I think that it, those are great things for everyone in this call and, you know, in the wider community to add as they identify them. I don't want to hold it up because we haven't figured out what the right key takeaways are, though, for each section. Yeah, and I think that can be added as we go, too. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, Paris, just to your point, I think the reason why we wanted to, like... We, yeah, so that's when I, when I, when Scott read through it, the truth is, because that was all based on interviews, right? And uh, this was, uh, oops, come on, go back, back here. Um, and this kind of goes very much into the GitHub detail. So what we were thinking is it would be good to have an additional page that goes more into, because it's too specific to GitHub. Uh, so that's what it felt like. It's all high level. And then suddenly we're talking about this very specific thing. We have uh, a section on the website just for GitHub. So we have a home for that, that content. And we have, the, when we have the website merged, uh, I'll help get that into um, its own page. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, that, that was, that was basically the reason uh, why we decided to uh, just skip it for version two or an additional page because it was like high level, high level, high level. And then it's suddenly you're talking about one, which was a little odd because it's like, why are you uh, diving deep into GitHub? And then, but that was just because of the interviews go that way. And I wanted to capture everything. Um, 
that's why I think like a good high like yeah, I think that automate as much as you can um might even want to go all the way up to, to I would personally take it all the way up to the top um and like because that's a good high level of why you should automate and the fact that it like just adding more things um and adding more process to a maintainer doesn't mean uh, that things are going to necessarily get better. It means things are going to increase in volume, which is burnout. Um, so that's why I'm in favor of making sure that this is really highlighted. Um, I actually, there's even talks that people have given that I can link um, after we merge, I can submit a PR um, for this section that talks about you know, automating contributor experience and stuff like that. Yeah, this one is merged already. So, um, okay, cool. All right, so I, cool. can, I, and... I can move I'll, that up. I'll... Oops, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say I can make a PR then. That's fine. <clears throat> um, and yeah, maybe I'm going to read through it and maybe just when we're talking about all these things to keep in mind, just always kind of say like something, don't worry. These things can also be automated. It's just like in theory, you have to be transparent. But you can also do, you can also leverage technology to make it, you know, um, um, yeah, easier on you. Uh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. I've just seen folks literally just like shut down when I have told them, oh, like, you know, you just need to do X, Y, Z thing. And it's just like the shutdown happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is a lot, right? Like, yeah, like, it is. So, and I can imagine that's a little frustrating because it's, if you don't provide the feedback and you, if you don't put in the time, you're discouraging people and you may lose people. So it's like, it's kind of like, ah. <laughs> yeah, the but, yeah. catch 22 of maintainership. Yeah. When, we have, <laughs> when we have the website, I think it's going to give us an opportunity to make this information feel much less like a wall of text because we can take so many of these things and bring them out into their own separate pages too so that we can link to it. And this really can be high level with lots of links to um, other pages that go into the nitty gritty details. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm excited that you like the idea to have this like as a starting point and then kind of have all the things. Cause I think that's like, I, I mean, that's how like some people would start with that and some people will write, go right into the, the specifics depending where you're in. But if you're really starting at the very beginning and you need to know, you know, like as, just had that meta um, overview, right? Like then you go here and then, yeah. Um, okay, so. It's the end of the meeting. Scott said, well, do you, huh? Someone else needs this conference room. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being silly. Um, yeah, I'll just look out for your PRs and uh, we'll start getting stuff merged. And then when we identify things, we'll just make follow-up issues so that if we need to do things like move stuff up or make an entire section about the GitHub repo versus org level or whatever, uh, we don't lose track of those. Awesome. Merge okay. fast, make extra issues. Awesome. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Awesome <laughs> contributor management guide here. That's awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. Bye. Bye.